Uh, following on from the 1272s, we've already discussed the two track meter selector selecting the signal to the two main VU meters for the two track uh, outputs. Next to it, we have the SLS system. Now, the SLS system uh, has a level control, it has a cut on and off control, and it has uh, four sources. Uh, the source from the monitor loudspeakers, a source from the externals of the monitor, a source from the Q uh, buses, or a source from the mix bus. Now, these are quite important because you could use this um, not only as an actual factor to send to the SLS loudspeakers, but it could also be used as a second set of Q mixes. Uh, for the musicians where you could select the monitors or the externals or the cues or the main mix to them. Next to it we have the headphone output. Now the headphone output has a level control and an on and off and again has exactly the same duplication of the sources that can be fed from the studio loudspeaker. The actual jack for the headphones can be located underneath the buffer um, just by the monitor section. This would be the same source as the main loudspeakers in the control room. The external could be a return from the DAW that you want to listen to. You may want to listen to the Q mix uh, to balance it better, or you may want to listen to the main mix output when you're actually doing the mixing. Following on from the headphone output, we have the reverb returns. There are two stereo reverb returns. We have the level control for the reverb return, and we also have an on and off for the reverb return as well. We also have a width control with an in and out switch on the knob as well, which can be selected to narrow, all the way through to no change whatsoever, all the way through to being wide. Following on from there, we have a balance control, and also on this balance control, we have a mono switch as well. The output of the reverb can be sent to the main mix buses, to one and two left and right main mix buses. They can also be affled so that it can be checked to see that the signal is, is, is sounding okay. And it can also be sent to the Q mix so that if uh, the artist wants some reverb mixed in with his uh, headphone sends, he can have that as well. Also, another function of the reverb return is there is a solo isolate system. When this is off, then any solo on the console will cut the reverb return. However, if the isolation is selected with a long press, then the reverb return is then isolated from the solo system, which allows for the reverb to still be uh, returned without it being cut when you are using it using the solo system. Below the reverb returns, we have the two mono DI inputs. These inputs can be used to return, say, the mix from another mixer onto the main mix, or it could be when you're using the console for as a big mix down system, you could return the Q outputs which you're using to do some of the mixing, mixing down with, put them through a processor, and then feed them through the DI inputs and then be able to select them onto the main mix buses left and right. There is a level control to adjust the level, and there's also a pan in left and right control as well. Also, not only can the signal be sent to the main mix buses on one and two left and right, but it can also be affled to check that the signal is good when you're bringing it back into the console, and it can be sent to the Q buses as well if you wish to use the input to, as more inputs onto the Q bus when you're doing your mixing. To the right of the reverb inputs and the DI inputs, we have the mix bus insertion system here. Now we have two 500 unit slots, which can either be patchable from the patch, or they can be inserted across the main mix bus. These slots don't necessarily have to be compressors, they could be EQs or they could be similar 500 series units. The insertion switching is done on these buttons here. We have the insertion in and out, and the insertion can be pre-fade. We also have the two buttons here which will allow us to select both the left and the right 500 series modules across the main mix bus. 
When we do that, they will not be available from the patch. The last control in this section is the insert mix return control. This is a level control and on and off switch which will allow you to blend the parallel processing onto the mix bus. The control room monitor is split into two sets of inputs. We have the inputs which come from the console buses, so it comes from the auxes, the cues and the mix, selected onto the internal button. And we also have a set of inputs which can be brought in as externals. There are six externals, three of them can be 5.1, and then three of them are stereo. This will then feed the monitor level control. Along with the, these two input selectors, we have the sum button. This allows you to sum externals and also to sum any of the mix inputs or cue inputs together to be fed to the monitor loudspeakers. The monitor level control is a stepped attenuator level control with no VCAs or MDACs used in the stereo mode and has a calibration point which is 10 dBs below the main output level, allowing it to be set to 85 dB SPL. Above the level control, we have the dim level, which is variable from 0 to minus 35. And we also have the Athel Piffle level, which will be sent to the monitor loudspeakers if the solo system is in safe. Below the loudspeaker level, we have the master cut, we have the dimmer, and we also have a switch to mono up the loudspeaker outputs. Slightly just above the dim, we also have a dim talkback level control, which is separate from the dim control, which if any of the cues as SLS and talkback switches are selected, this will set a different level of dim onto the loudspeakers, which is different to the monitor dim. To the right of the monitor loudspeaker level control, we have the individual cuts for the six loudspeaker outputs. And we also have the selection of the three loudspeaker systems. We have the A set, which can be stereo and 5.1. We have M1, which is stereo, and we have M2, which is stereo. And as, as mentioned earlier, the M2 can be fed with the RTB when it's not being used. When the monitor is set in 5.1 mode, we also have access to an 80 Hertz low pass filter, which can be applied to the sub loudspeaker output. We can also swap the LSRS mix signal onto the front left and right loudspeakers in order to be able to check them correctly. Along with all of the other new functions that we've added to the console, we have a comprehensive talkback system as well. We can talk back to the cues, pressing this button, and we have an independent level control for this. Also, when we talk back to the cues, we can dim the monitor loudspeaker outputs set to the talkback dim level control. And we can also talk to the cues where the mix level will be dimmed by minus 20 and you will be able to talk comfortably over that mix level to the artist. To the right of the Q button, we have the SLS button. This allows us to talk to the SLS loudspeaker independently with its own level control. And we can also slate the main output of the main mix as well, and we have a level control for that as well. We have a separate talkback output with a, a trim pot, which allows you to send talkback level from the talkback microphone um, at the top of the console to a designated output. Lastly, in the talkback section, we have a red light button, which has a closing set of contacts, which allows you to switch a red light on outside the studio when you are recording. The last part of the monitor section here is the master cell section. On the top row, we have all the solo functionality. So we have the solo safe system, 
And we can also select that if we don't want Apple, um, but we want Piffle to go to the monitor loudspeakers, we can select those as well. The solo system has the ability to have latch solos or interlocking solos. If neither of them are pressed, momentary solos. The next function along here is the reset button, so that if any solos are pressed, we can use that to reset them. Also, the reset button can be used to be able to put any channels into solo isolate. When these channels are put into solo isolate, they no longer will cut any of the other channels, okay, even though we're not in solo safe. However, they will act as affles so that you can still, when you're soloing, you can still hear the solos in the monitor loudspeakers. However, any solos that are not in, any channels that are not in isolate will cut all the rest of the solos. So this, this isolation is good for when you are using um, channels as group returns and you don't want them cut uh, by the solo system. In its default position, the feeds, the auxes and the cues can be pre the channel cut. However, this would be useful when you're recording and you want to make a monitor mix where you're using the cuts but you do not want to disturb the auxiliary sends or the cues. However, if you want the feed to the auxes and the cues to be post-cut, for instance when you're mixing, this can be done by just simply selecting this button here. As discussed earlier within the 1952 unit, we can select the AUGs on just individually, or they can be selected as a group. Similarly, we can also select the AUGs all to pre using the master button, or we can select them individually. This is repeated for all the auxiliaries and the cue selector using the aux on master button and the pre post master button. As discussed earlier on, we have the cue to mix button. If you are returning signals from the door of which you are selecting them onto the line inputs and then onto the main mix bus, and then the simple inputs are returning from the door are being selected onto the cue bus, then this button allows you then to mix the cue bus onto the mix bus in order to be able to combine them together to make a final mix. These three buttons here, we have master cut for the main mix outputs, and as discussed earlier on with the 1952 cut A, cut B system, you have the master cut A bus and the master cut B bus to allow you to do selection of vocal comping or mix comping using the two master buses.